time, we need to be engaging them more. You know, I told, I'm telling my sales team, listen, call your referral partners, reach out to them, engage them, do a virtual meeting, ask them what they need, ask them how we can add value. Because I'll give you a quick example. In, in my business, I'm in telecommunications, right? So it's a segment of IT. So most of our referral partners are also in some segment of IT, right? They just don't sell exactly what we sell. But when we call them and say, hey, how you doing? How's this affecting you? What type of feedback are you getting from your customers? Um, how are, what, what opportunities are you uncovering? Guess what? We start to talk and have dialogue and we, we end up strategizing, right? And we uncover more opportunities that we can collab on. And then it kind of jogs our memory uh, so, that, so that we can say, hey, what about this customer? What about that opportunity we talked about three months ago? And now we're working three, four, five, six more deals uh, because we reached out and engaged uh, the, the referral partner to, to uncover or to ask them, you know, what's going on and to add value. So helping them, you know, close the gap and solve any problems that they have is going to uncover opportunities. Uh, secondly, we got to pivot our message when we're out here hustling, right? So uh, I think that before, you know, our, our pitch, when we cold call, you know, when, when our sales guys cold call, you know, they used to say, hey, this is, this is Bill with MyTech. We offer internet and voice service for businesses nationwide. I love to see some information. What's a good email I can send that to, right? But now the message is that we can't, we can't call anybody and say that, right? We got to call them and say, hey, listen, based on what's going on right now in the country, here's what's important to you right now. Okay, so we got to change our messaging and everybody's got to do that. If you're not doing it, please. I mean, to me, that's kind of obvious. But when you call people, uh, let's say you're in fitness. I mean, you, you could call existing customers or potential customers or folks in your funnel and say, hey, now is, is, is more important now to, for you to pay attention and prioritize your fitness. Why? Because you're at home all day. You may be snacking all day. Let me help you create some structure. Right. So I said that because I saw Kevin there. But I mean, what you got to do is just tailor your message to what's going on because the world hasn't stopped, right? Nashville may be on lockdown. Silicon Valley may be on lockdown. The countries may be on lockdown, right? But guess what? Industry is still moving. Money is still passing hands and we still got to make money, right? We still got to plant seeds and we plan to have a business once we get past this. Uh, so we still have to, to get our message out with the pitch, but we just got to pivot what we're saying. We got to change up what we're saying and make it relative because everybody understands. The whole world understands what's going on. So, so you may get people that may say, hey, I got to put that on hold or I got to cancel this or I got to stop or I got to talk to me when this is over and that's fine, but you still must go through your regimen. And, you and lastly, you got to structure your activity, okay? So when you're, when you're grinding, when you're hustling, especially if you're working from home, you got to create your own structure. I was just talking to Zap about how we put this structure together for my son in terms of school, right? Homeschooling or curriculum because he's at home every day now. And his teachers are sending assignments. So we, we set him up from like 9.30 to 1.30. And he has a, a few breaks in there, lunch. But, you know, we got him set up and like, look, stick to this schedule. And that's the same thing you got to do with your business. So I have like an example of a schedule that I made up here that I'll show you guys in a minute. But, but one thing that I want you to, to pay attention to is not just making a structure, but making sure that, that your hustle is actually work, okay? And I have my own definition of work. The, the definition I have for work is talking to clients or referral partners or talking to potential clients or referral partners. That's all work is, okay? And when I say talking to, I mean engaging, right? So it could be, you know, email and all this stuff, but engaging clients or, or, or potential clients or engaging referral partners or potential referral partners. That's all work is, okay? Now, preparing a proposal or organizing your email and all that, so this, that's not work, right? But, but do you have to prepare a proposal? Absolutely. You got to do that. But, but do not categorize that as work because if you do, I've seen colleagues before spend hours putting together a big proposal and then they think they worked for three hours. You didn't because work is engaging a potential customer, right? Or a potential referral partner. So if we, if we look at our day, right? If you look at your day, let, let's, let's just look at yesterday and, and you look at all the things you did, how many of those things were related to engaging a, a customer or a potential customer or a referral partner? Like, and, and you may look at your day and say, man, I worked seven hours yesterday. 
but how much of that activity was actual work according to my definition? And it may just be 30 minutes. It may just be one hour. And then you realize, wow, I only worked one hour. And, and, and I, I'm telling you, this is something that you could use after Corona, right? You can look at your day because a lot of times we get sidetracked and we think we're working, but you're just busy, okay? So there's a difference between being productive as it, as it relates to sales and being busy. And, and work when it relates to sales is revenue generating activity, meaning activity that's gonna lead to revenue, right? If it doesn't lead to revenue directly, then it's not work. Now you gotta do other things. I, I even believe that driving to an appointment is not work, okay? Preparing a proposal, preparing a presentation, it's not work. Uh, but calling prospects is, you know, uh, doing a meeting with a prospect is, is work, networking, going to a networking meeting, even if it's virtual, I mean, that is work, right? Because you're engaging partners or customers or potential partners and customers. So keep that in mind when you set up your particular schedule. And, and then the D in PhD guy stands for discipline. So I've kind of touched on this uh, in the other two points of psychology and hustle, but especially as it relates to structure, right? So you got to structure your time, and, and you have to commit to it, okay? So number one, you gotta set boundaries. So if you're working out of your home, which you probably are right now, we must set boundaries. What does that mean? You gotta communicate with your family, okay? So you gotta communicate with them. You gotta let them know, like, look, here's, here's my schedule, okay? Uh, between 8.30 and 10.30, um, you know, at, on a meeting, I'm in virtual meetings, I'm making calls, I'm making follow-up, whatever I'm doing. I'm taking a break here, then I'm, I'm eating, one to three, I'm back at it, right? So whatever that schedule is, communicate with it and then set the boundaries, right? Like get to your office or wherever you're gonna work and make sure that your family knows. It may, even if folks who don't live with you, right? It could be your girlfriend, boyfriend, your parents, whoever's blowing you up on the phone or on, on a social media platform, just let people know that typically hits you up. Hey, listen, between these hours right here, I'm, I'm putting in work and I'm trying to plant seeds you know, to, to have a, a business after this is over, right? So set those boundaries and just communicate that up front. Um, the next thing is be disciplined about staying on message, right? Um, it's easy to get sidetracked and talk about the politics of this, right? Or talk about, um, you know, what's going to, how it's affecting you and, and so-and-so lost their job and all this stuff. Do not get sidetracked. You, we must maintain the focus, especially if we're supposed to be working, right? So if you've allocated time for prospecting and, and somebody gets off topic, bring it right back around or get off the phone or just, you know, end the conversation, right? Because your time is money and, and be disciplined enough to, to stay on message. Uh, we have a saying in our business, it says discipline pays dividends. And I remember when I first started my company, you know, I used to, uh, I, I stayed in a town home actually up the street from from the ec and you know i had a, a third bedroom and that was my office i would go in there i'd sit down and i'd say listen i'm gonna make calls between 8 30 and 10 30. and that, that was my prospecting time and i would be on the phone from 8 30 to 10 30. and i was super disciplined if somebody came and rang the doorbell i wouldn't get up and go check who, who came to the door um i told my girlfriend who's now my wife uh i told her hey between 8 30 and 10 30 I'm, I'm prospecting, I'm making calls, don't call me, right? Because I'm trying to get it in. I'm telling you the Queen of England could have called me, I wouldn't have taken that call because I was focused. I was so sick about it, I wouldn't even get up to use the restroom, right? I was like, I'm making calls for two hours, I'm not getting up because I know if I get up, I'm gonna break my momentum, right? And it would call after call after call. And I got very disciplined at it and I got to the point where I could make uh, about 100 calls uh, in two hours, if I if I went back to back to back, and and those are really simple prospecting calls where I was just collecting an email address and and confirming some inform information, but the discipline, y'all, is what paid me dividends, right? Because because most people and and here's the key, most people uh, won't be disciplined during this time because there's too many distractions. You know, there's there's the president, and then there's other news, and then there's how your neighbors were affected, and people hitting you up, and then there's funny memes and and, and videos about all this. And I'm here to tell you, you got to block it out. You got to stay disciplined. And thirdly, uh, in, as it relates to discipline, just outwork everybody, you know, outwork everybody. Um, 
again, another fundamental principle that I have personally uh, outside of Corona, but I think now is the time because now, again, we got more distractions, all right? So people are all over the place and, and, and people are, most people are not focused. They're not disciplined. They're gonna get distracted, okay? So what we have to do is make sure that we build that discipline muscle and outwork everybody and stay committed to the structure that we have. So here's an example, y'all, on the screen of, of uh, a schedule that you can make. So that's my challenge for you guys, to, to map out a schedule for yourself. So as you can see, like uh, in the morning, you know, up, and, and I encourage you, I know somebody said they just got up, but I here, here's my uh, piece of uh, feedback or advice. S schedule an early morning meeting, okay? So that could be with a client, a referral partner, a potential client. I don't care what it is. It, it could be a, a buddy uh, of yours who y'all are just being accountable to each other or whatever, but schedule an early morning meet, all right? Schedule something early so that you have to get up and hit that meeting. And, but it, and even before you do that, make sure you get your mind right. So that's why I got like meditation, motivation in the morning, hit your meeting, prospecting at nine, 10, could be a call with a client or referral partner. Uh, and then you check your emails at one at 11, um, uh, your paperwork, lunch, one to three follow-ups and three to five other stuff, right? Now, this is just an example, but notice what I put in red. What I put in red equals my definition for work, okay, that I mentioned before talking to prospects, potential prospects, or engaging referral partners or potential referral partners. So that's work. So in this example, um, it looks like I would have worked, what, four hours, okay? Now look at the other items that I have here, emails, check voicemail, paperwork, research uh, on customers or partners. Hey, this is all work that I have to do, but I don't consider it work. And I can, if I put in four hours of work every day, true work, okay? I, I believe that, uh, that that's above average uh, for sure. Because most people are not putting in four hours of work every day, I guarantee you, according to my definition. So during this time, again, too, so many distractions, but we got to pivot that message and make it happen. So psychology, hustle, and discipline, guys. So, so again, develop the right mindset, have long-term thinking, right? Um, because we're planting seeds. We're, we're farmers right now, okay? I heard somebody say, one of my mentors said, this is the re you're hitting the refresh button. It's a clean slate, right? But we have to have the mindset or the psychology as a farmer. A farmer goes out there and they plant seeds, right? And the farmer does not go out the next day and expect, expect a harvest, right? They are, they're, they're fertilizing it. They, they expect the sun to do its work. They water it. And over time, uh, the harvest will come and it, it comes differently in different spots. Hustle. The, the main thing about hustle is understanding what true work is, okay, and creating that structure for yourself. And then discipline, again, discipline pays dividends, right? So stick to your structure and don't get distracted. Don't get distracted with all the conversations going on. Have, do all that like after five o'clock, right, or after four o'clock, whenever you stop working. But while you're, while you're working, while you're prospecting, um, and, and while you're adding value first, Okay, we talked about that in terms of psychology. Make sure you stay on, on target in terms of your messaging so that you actually make a difference uh, and, and create and plant the right seeds. So um, the last thing that, that I want to, to uh, acknowledge here when it comes to, to sales is that questions are the answers, okay? Questions are the answers. So I was talking to uh, one of my associates about you know, we were talking about, you know, what should his messaging be? Like, what should he be saying? What, what, what should he uh, be delivering to his customers in terms of an email and, and all this type of stuff? He was talking about coming up with scripts. And I said, man, the main thing that you really should look into or, or think about is what questions are you asking your customers or potential customers? And I kind of talked about that up front. But the questions are key because think about it. If you ask a customer, we, we all know the difference between a closed-ended question and an open-ended question, right? So if you ask a customer, are you doing okay? They can either say yes or no, right? If you ask a customer, um, do you want to buy my service or product? They, they're either going to say yes or no, all right? But if you ask a customer, what do you like about my product? Then that's a different question, right? It's not yes or no. It's open-ended, right? And guess what? 
you you help them focus on what what they like about your product because you ask them what do you like and that's why i say questions are the answers what answer do you want you want more business right we want more traction we want more conversations so we have to ask questions that generate business we have to ask questions that address solutions so the questions you should be asking your customers i'm not gonna tell you what the question is but but the question should be related to your business and it should be open-ended okay so so one question that we're asking is how has this pandemic affected uh, your technology for your business okay it's just a simple question right and and guess what the answer we're getting back is well our staff has to go work at home and they have to work remotely now and we were not prepared for that okay or half of our staff was prepared but the other half were not or i'm having to lay people off right i'm having to do xyz right uh, another question is uh what do you need from us that we're asking you know what do you need from us so uh, again ask questions related to your business your industry your product or service and ask open-ended questions and listen okay you got two ears and one mouth right so you should listen twice as much as you hear uh, i mean twice as much as you talk and and if you listen your customers will be able to to uh, deliver a message to you that you probably were not going to deliver to them okay uh and they're delivering you the answer that you want so uh and it's going to give you some intel it's going to give you some insight uh i think i said this before but also when you're adding value to your referral partners make sure you ask them the same questions you got to ask them the same questions because they're out here talking to customers they're trying to make money just like you and you can get insight and intel from them as well all right so guys hopefully uh i shared some ideas with you that were um insightful and helpful and what i'm going to do i don't know how many people are, are on the chat here i mean on the uh, webinar but what i'm going to do is i'm going to drop a link in the chat and the link is a digital workbook uh, that i put together i wrote a book called get off your assets uh, a couple of years ago and i just finished a digital workbook for it so i'm going to give it to you guys y'all can use it uh and hopefully that'll be helpful for you during this time and and for your business and personally uh, but I'll put it in the chat. So my ask for from you is for you just not to share it, okay? I know I can't control that really, but you know what I'm saying? Don't be sharing it because I'm actually selling it, okay? But I'm gonna give it to you guys uh, as a value add and it's 12 principles in the book. It's actually 12 principles uh, of uh, their values really that we use at MyTech and that we commit to. And uh, so it's a workbook, a workflow, and so you can relate those principles to your business as well. So I'll find the link right quick and uh, I'll give it to you. I'll drop it in here. And, that, and that's all I got. Now, if y'all got any questions, uh, holler at me right quick. You know, let yeah, me know. Yeah, let's do questions. Uh, I can unmute. If you know how to raise your hand, you can do that. Otherwise you can type them in. What's up, Dominique? <laughs> That's, that's my buddy right there, Dominique. Hey, hey it's kind of quiet up through everybody in other parts of the house. <laughs> I, okay, okay, you good. No, you good. I saw your, I saw your kids doing uh, the whatchamacallit the other day. No, working out. That's what I saw them doing. <laughs> I was you like, look at that. All right, y'all give me a minute. I'm gonna find this link and I'm gonna drop it in here. And uh, y'all enjoy. I have a question. Yeah, what's up? So when you are reaching out to companies or existing clients and potential clients, how do you know whether to decipher if you offer your services for a price versus being sensitive to the times and offering it for a discount? So what are your thoughts on discounting your services versus offering your services uh, for price depending on who you're talking to yeah I, I think so great question and here's i got two points to that number one you got to come up with what you're going to do before you call the client okay um i was actually in front of somebody while they were on a call and the client basically said i just put the link in there by the way the client actually actually said, um, well, you know, we really can't afford it right now. And would you be able, would you, you know, do this and that? And, and 
they um they put the client on hold and, and asked me. I was like, you ain't figured that out? Okay, so figure it out before you're talking to the client, okay? Number one. And number two, um, I think you should be very flexible, okay? So you may have an A, B, and C scenario or A and B scenario, okay? So you may say, hey, we're discounting our services until, you know, May 1st or whatever, or June 1st. Or you may say, hey, we got a free, uh, we, we do this for free for 30 days, and then you enroll May 1st, you know what I'm saying? So it may be a good opportunity to uh, enroll customers and get them engaged, and maybe you don't offer the, your full portfolio of services as you normally would if they were paying, but it helps you, you know, get your foot in the door and add some value, um, you know, initially or up front. Make sense? Thank you. You got it. I like your picture, Dominique. Your hair. That was right. looking good. Hey, hey, I got a question for um, uh, Kevin. Kevin's still on, right? Kevin's here. What's up, Kevin? Yeah, I see you. Um, so, so how, what, what are you doing, Kevin, man, for, uh, in, in terms of working out? Are you doing like some virtual workouts and stuff like that? Oh, where did Kevin go? I Kevin. He went to go work out. <laughs> we can't hear you. Uh, I'm, I teach virtual Pilates, if anybody's interested, if that's what you're asking for. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, I you do? Just, yeah, that's online. Cool. Four o'clock, Friday, Saturday, Wednesday. All right, 9 a.m. on Mondays. Yeah, I was, I was just interested to know, I mean, like, uh, so were you doing that before, like in person, right? Yeah, in person for sure. But And now yeah, everybody, yeah. the whole industry is virtual. So... You could do it without a mat. I mean, you, all you need is a mat, you know, you don't need any special yeah. equipment. What yeah, I think platform that's are you using to teach? Gyms. Zoom. You so you're, Zoom. All, you're all already got the app. You already got what you need. Yeah. Uh, send me a message if you're interested. So I was telling uh, Zap uh, before we actually started that we use Marco Polo uh, to communicate back and forth. So I know if you guys are familiar with that video, video chat app, um, but a buddy of mine at EO uses it like with his employees. And, I mean, he has a couple of hundred employees and he said they got rid of email and everything. But <clears throat> and this was before the Corona epidemic. Right. But um, uh, we we are using uh, Marco Polo with our partners. because So we have over 300 partners and we communicate with with a lot of them, about 40 of them pretty uh, con consistently. And so we're Marco Polo and back and forth big time. And I think that now. Is, is a good time to start using some of these cool uh, platforms outside of Zoom too, because like everybody's using Zoom and Zoom is like the, the foundation, it's like the grandfather of, okay, if you're gonna do a meeting or webinar, do that. But if you got just a short message to send somebody, I mean, Marco Polo is cool. And um, you know, people are hip to it. Like, I, I don't care what industry you're in, like right now, people are more, they're open to it and I think it'll set you apart, but just being open and flexible with the tools you're using yeah. is period. No, I totally I agree with that. I'm making and a member Marco Polo. No one reads anymore. So maybe if I made a video, they'd listen. <laughs> yeah, no, video yeah, is the new not. technology, you know, and, and uh, I mean, with Zoom, like I think it's totally the duct tape kind of solution for, especially fitness instructors, anybody teaching movement, like, and that, honestly, that's what I'm working on at the EC is a platform that's, you know, better than Zoom that allows you to work out digitally. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. I'm running a yeah. trivia show tonight on Zoom, but my friend is listening in who's like a developer because he's like, nice. I want to create a product that integrates with Zoom that allows you to like customize the experience, which would be interesting. For Kevin, sure. I mean, playing board games we over Zoom. Hear Kevin. Kevin. That's gonna be huge. Kevin raised his hand, but we need the technology right. <clears throat> I mean, that's that's what I'm doing to my prospects. I'm just calling them and telling them, "Hey, you need help with Zoom. You need to know how to understand it." Because a lot of them, you know, they don't know how to really use use the technology. Yeah. Even so, so I'll tell you a quick story. Like uh, one of our customers, they have about 13 employees, and you know, they uh, they had to go remote. 
Uh, so we set them up with, you know, voice over IP phones and everything. And that's our business, you know. So we set them up to go remote at home. And, and then they, they called back and said, you know, what should we be using in terms of software, you know, to do meetings? And, you know, that's not our business. We don't, you know, we can make a recommendation, but we don't sell software. But we actually reached out to, uh, to one of our strategic partners. He's like, yo, man, you can sell Zoom, you know? So we, like a couple of days ago, just became a partner to, to offer Zoom uh, to clients. Um, and like Zoom is just going crazy right now. You know what I mean? And I, uh, we as a company subscribe to Zoho. So Zoho has an online meeting platform too. But, uh, but Zoom is just, just crazy huge. But um, yeah, man, it's amazing. Like how many people don't know how to use like a simple platform, you know, it's, it's super user friendly, but that's a, that's a good value add though. Yeah. For sure. I see Kevin. Did you, did you figure it out, Kevin? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say because Kevin's not on mute, but we can't hear him. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Ashley's trying to say something now too. I am. And I don't know if you, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, cause I was, cause I've been having issues with my video too. Can you guys see me? No. Okay. Um, okay. So Bill, I just had a quick question around the referral partner. Mm -hmm. um, how did you find the criteria or identify what that ideal referral partner looked like? What would look like for for you and my tech? Like, what what did that entail? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of organic for us in, in mm. terms of how we found out who was the ideal referral partner. But I think naturally, your uh, referral partner is going to sell something that's related to your business. Or a better way to think about it is like, who do your customers buy from before they buy from you, or who do they buy from after they buy from you? Like those, those probably are going to be your referral partners. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. And then, and then too, think about who's referred you business before, you know, I mean, we can help you, but you two months behind already. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, you know, you tripping. Okay. So let's get this caught up and then, you know, let's, let's move forward. But um, I'm here, like everybody's dealing with it. So, I feel you and I, we've been in over backwards for customers. Cause again, it's harder to get to retain a new customer than it is to keep what you already got. Thank you. That's really helpful. No doubt, Brian. <laughs> Can we hear Kevin now? <laughs> oh, Kevin would like you to share your schedule. Oh man, my schedule's all over the place. Is it, is it? Oh, that's somebody else. Uh, you want me to share my schedule, Kevin? Man, okay. Um, so my schedule is really is really crazy uh, right now. But I, I usually get up, right now I'm getting up at about six o'clock. Um, uh, before Corona, I was getting up at like 4.30. You know, I'm going you to the gym. wake up at 4.30? Yeah, you know, to go to the gym and stuff. What time do you go to bed? Oh yeah, definitely about nine, 9.30. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question though, Zap. That that's the that's the real question. Like what time you go to bed? Because I do I do love I wake up early and I love to like flex that a little bit because yeah, yeah. I've heard many times again like CEOs wake up early. But four thirty yeah. is an impressive time. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh I got buddies that wake up at three, but they in bed by nine. But you gotta you gotta get to sleep. If I go to sleep by nine thirty, I'll wake up at, at four, four thirty, like without an alarm clock. Mm -hmm. But um but so I'm getting up, I got a 7.30 accountability call. So I jump on my accountability call at 7.30 and then uh, at eight o'clock. Who's that with? So that's with my group, uh, thegrindincludesfriday.com. Yeah, so uh, we jump on there. Uh, it's 28 of us uh, in the accountability group. Uh, it's usually a handful of us on the call every morning. It varies, you know, if people make it. But uh, yeah, everybody just, just um, gives their top goal for the day. I give a short message, short insight, and then uh, we communicate throughout the day on Facebook in a private Facebook group. But um, so we do that. And then at eight o'clock, I'm hitting it. You know, uh, I'm drinking my water. My goal is to drink 75% 75, 75 of a gallon every day. So I get four cups in before I, before I start, start out at eight. 
And then I'm, uh, I'm getting my prospecting and follow-ups in between eight and nine, unless I have a meeting. So I'll shoot that back. Um, but usually uh, I get some revenue generating, one hour of revenue generating activity in before 12 and one hour after 12. Uh, so my schedule is all over the place. I could have a meeting, I could have a call, I could have a webinar, you know, and folks are hitting me up throughout the day sporadically. Um, but now I just make sure I get my hour in, you know, and so I schedule that. And when I, when I drop my goals in our accountability group, I'm letting them know like what hour I'm prospecting, what hour I'm following up, okay? Um, but yeah, that's my schedule. Joe asks, how did you form slash find that group? Great question, Joe. How did I do what? How did you form slash find oh. the accountability group? Oh man. Um, so I, I do these sales boot camps, right? Uh, which, which, uh, is <laughs> Zap, you are. <laughs> what? Oh my God! Please my mom on made a me lunch. You need a bib, though. So I used to do the, I, well, I still do these sales boot camps, right? Every other month or so, and and uh, Zap knows about these. So and where I I teach folks, you know, how to sell, you know, and how to really how to generate one referral a day. That's my goal, you know, um, because that's what it, we were able to do with my tech, with my business. And but what I noticed is the boot camp is four hours long, and I give all this information, and they get a workbook. And then a week, you know, goes by and people come back and they're excited and they say, hey, man, I had success or I tried this and you said that and, and you had success. But in reality, um, you know, we, we get back to our habits, you know, we start doing whatever, <laughs> you know, we were doing before, uh, which may not have been working. So I figured that if we had some accountability around the sales boot camp or the account accountability around just going after it, then people would stay the course. And the first time I started the accountability group, it was just a 90 day, I said for 90 days, we're gonna do accountability. Cause I'm a believer that you can change or turn anything around in 90 days. So, uh, but now it's just every month. I mean, we just, we're going after it. Uh, this is actually the fourth month that we've done it. And uh, if you want info about it, I'll, I'll put the link in the chat. It's the grind includes So I didn't when even know you had a website for it. I thought it was just the Facebook group. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that talks about like what, you know, what's offered. Cause we, you know, we do some coaching and all that sales coaching and all that. Uh, but the accountability group is kind of the foundation of that. Um, it is paid. Somebody asks, is it paid? Uh, the first 30, you can try it out for 30 days at no cost. And then it's 35 bucks, 35 bucks a month. And, and that comes with like my free, uh, the ebook that I just gave y'all. Somebody said the link wasn't working. So if, if you guys actually, uh, I'll, I'll drop my email in here. And if you cannot, uh, oops, I just sent that privately. I'm sorry. Hold on guys. Pray for me. But but if the if the link isn't working, I'll I'll check it and make sure that it works, and then just email me, and I will shoot it to you. Perfect. <laughs> All good. All right. Any more questions? Well, I think it's about time to wrap up then. Thank you. Again, we're Good gonna one. imagine a virtual round of, I really do miss clapping. That's the hardest part for me with Zoom is the audience vibe. But thanks for tuning in. Thanks so much, Bill. Um, everyone should really go check out The Grind Includes Friday, most definitely. Anything else you wanna add, Bill? The, there's a, face, there's a, a public Facebook group on, a, uh, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, where we drop a lot of content. Uh, it's it's uh, helpful, insightful content and motivation. So uh, you can join that one, you know, obviously at no cost on, uh, on Facebook. So check us out. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you See so much.